Okay, this is our applications of calculus topic, and we're going to have a look just now at a, a little part called related rates. And by rates, we mean rates of change. And in other words, we're going to be looking at differentiation and derivatives. So in this topic, we're going to be looking at creating or working out the rate of change of one uh, function, uh, usually in relation to um, possibly time or an other variable, but by connecting it to other rates of change that we already know. So what's the connection between various rates of change? Well, there's a theory behind it which uh, we need to be able to use. It's the theory behind the chain rule. It's the theory behind the, the uh, differentiating a parametric function. Um, and we've already used that idea here already. So for instance, uh, for those, if you remember about parametric differentiation, the, the derivative dy by dx can be expressed uh, by a two fractions multiplied together. And the idea is that we take our dy and our dx and we write them um, as numerator and denominator as separate fractions. And according to the, the, the laws of fractions, if as long as we've got the same uh, value on the missing points here and here, they would cancel out and it would still give us dy by dx. So for parametric differentiation, we actually introduced in dt. So we're actually doing kind of related rates already that they, we wanted to study dy by dx, but we can't directly. So what we do is we look at the rate of change dy by dt, we multiply it by the rate of change dt by dx, and that gives us uh, the representative dy by dx. That's exactly what we're going to do here, but for more than just parametric functions. So here's a kind of scenario. If V is the volume of an expanding sphere of radius r at time t, then we can derive the rate of change of the radius as it expands. So the first thing we want to do is always to work out what is it that we're trying to get, what's our end result. And in this kind of study here, uh, that would be the rate of change of the radius dr by dt in this case, because we're doing it in terms of time. And so what we might do is we might create this um, little calculation here. dr by dt is our goal. And so we, can, we know that we're going to have a fraction with dr as its numerator, and another one with dt as its denominator, and we have to introduce another variable depending on the information that we've got. And typically, for instance, with a, a sphere, we might have information about its volume. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. It is possible for us to differentiate that uh, formula, dv with respect to r, and we would have uh, some formula that we'll go on and do in a moment, but the point being that we could work out dv by dr, and that means that we could come up with, if we invert that, we'd get dr by dv, so we're, we're good with that, and if we knew some information about the rate of change of volume over time, then we could work out the rate of change of uh, the radius. So that's the, 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 the process behind it, we're kind of going to look for a goal, but we need to split that up into two, okay? So, uh, the just a little note, uh, yeah, that's just basically what I'm saying. If we know something, we can then fill it all out. So let's have a look at this example. It's the same idea. Um, so this is example seven. So a sphere of radius r is expanding at the rate of 100 cubic centimeters per second. The sphere is changing its volume, its rate of change of volume is 100 cubic centimeters per second. Calculate the rate of increase of the radius. Okay, so a little bit of uh, hunting down the text. Calculate the rate of increase of the radius. The rate of change of the radius is dr by dt. So that's my goal. And I know that I can create a calculation that looks like that. And I just need to then decide what's my new variable going to be, what can I work out um, as far as other related rates of change. Well, the first big clue would be here. Um, the, the sphere is increasing, its volume is expanding at the rate of 100 
In other words, we can say that the volume, the rate of change of volume with time, because look, cubic centimeters per second, that's volume divided by time, dv by dt is 100, and it's positive 100 because it's increasing. If the sphere were decreasing in volume by 100 cent cubic centimeters per second, it would be negative 100. So it's very important that positive values represent an increase or an increasing rate of change, and negative values represent a decreasing rate of change. So we're going to use positive 100, and it also gives us the clue that that dv is the extra variable that we're going to put in here. So we then need to hunt down the two values. We've got dv by dt is 100. That's great. So that's that number there. What we need is some expression or value for dr by dv. And as I suggested, it's not always that way around. But we know that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And therefore, we could differentiate that with respect to r. And we would get 3 times, that's the power, 3 times 4 thirds pi r squared. To increase the power by 1. And that would give us 4 pi r squared. So our function dv by dr is 4 pi r squared. Unfortunately, we're looking for dr by, B, by dv. And so we can represent that by the inverse of 4 pi r squared, which is 1 over. So there we go, put that in there. 1 over 4 pi r squared. In other words, we can simplify that to give us 100 over 4 pi r squared or 25 over pi r squared. And that would be regarded as a, a general um, general rule or function, just as a gradient function would determine the gradient of a, a curve at any value of x. Here, uh, we've got a general function for the rate of change of the radius for particular values of r. Okay. Now, we're told at the beginning that we want to know what the rate of increase is when r is 6. So all we need to do is to say r equals 6 centimetres, the rate of change is going to be 25 divided by pi times 6 squared, which is just 25 over 36 pi, and it's centimetres per second. So we can write down rate of change of radius when r equals 6 centimetres is 25 over 36 pi centimetres per second. I think that works out something like uh, 0 0.22 centimetres per second, but you can leave it as an exact value. Okay, so that's the idea of related rates. We want to find a goal. We want to identify um, what it is that we're actually trying to find in the end, we need to split it up into two fractions, which create, we're introducing a, an extra variable, which gives us two related rates. That's why the topic's called that. And then we need to hunt down what those related rates are. Usually one bit of information is given as a numeric value in the story. The other one is usually some kind of formula uh, that you're going to have to introduce. Either you need to know it, work it out, or you'll be given it. Okay, so that's the idea of related rates. There's a couple more examples which we'll go on and study.